Zona, The Secrets of Chernobyl from Rebel Games. Where the hell did this game come from? What is it about? If I had to describe it, I would say it is a Fallout board game the way it was meant to be made. It is an adventure, survival, post-apocalyptic board game with a sprinkle of take that in there. Let's get into the review. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Battlecast. I'm going to be reviewing Zona, The Secrets of Chernobyl from Rebel Games. Now this is a game for one to four players and it plays in about two to two and a half hours. It is a story that wraps up entirely in one sitting and is largely a game based on adventure, uh, character advancement, and some kooky events. Now as always I review games based on gameplay components and fun factor, so let's go ahead and jump into gameplay. Now I'm going to kind of go over the gameplay a little quicker, I'm going to try to anyway. If you want to know the nitty gritty of what the gameplay is truly about, I have a full two hour gameplay session from start to finish that you should definitely check out as we kind of learn as we go. So Zona the Secrets of Chernobyl takes place obviously in the surrounding area of Chernobyl. It's been about 30 years since the catastrophic meltdown took place, and in the meantime, all sorts of government experiments have been happening in the zone. The result is a post-apocalyptic radioactive wasteland where beings and monsters of unimaginable power and origin roam free. You play as a scavenger who has learned of the source, which is the rarest of all artifacts in Zona contained deep within the sarcophagus. The objective of Zona is to get into the sarcophagus and get the source. First, however, players must travel to secret locations throughout Zona and collect two secrets which will allow them to unlock their way into the sarcophagus. There is only one winner in Zona. Now players lose in Zona if the Rumor event deck runs out. Now when you start Zona, there are actually 10 playable characters with varying stats, unique abilities, and unique starting equipment. The stats on your character sheet pertain to certain tests that you'll face throughout the game. You have alertness, physique, smarts, and willpower. The higher your stat, the more likely you are to pass the test when confronted. You also start with a certain reputation, and this can be increased or decreased as you play the game. Your character comes with a fatigue dial, and fatigue is a resource that allows you to reroll dice during tests, or can help you during certain scenarios. Lastly, your character comes with a backpack which holds some really interesting items which I'll get into later. Now, as you can see by the map, the color ranges from green to the east to red to the west. Things get harder and more dangerous as you move across this map. And the danger comes in the form of threat tokens, which are monsters or anomalies, or the events that you will have to face at the end of every round. Now, there are a ton of locations on this map, each with their own unique location action. Bunkers act as city hubs where players can rest, are sheltered from radiation, and can buy and sell items. You will notice that there are dotted and solid lines across the map, and this just dictates where you can move through or where you have to move around. Now the most important locations in Zona are the secret locations located on the edge of the map. These are where players will obtain their necessary secrets to gain access to the final area of the game. These secret locations can only be opened if you can pay the required materials to open them, and what they require is randomized every game. Now an actual round of Zona consists of three phases. You have the action phase, the event phase, and the rumor phase. In the action phase, players take up to two actions, which include moving to an adjacent area, taking a local action, resolving an encounter with a nearby threat token, accessing a secret location, and lastly, resting. Next, you move into the event phase where each player draws a card based on the zone color that they're in. If you're in a green zone, you draw a green card, yellow zone, yellow card, etc. These events are amazingly varied and will trigger very cool events based on where the player is located. Think of it kind of like the dead of winter where you know, if you're in the right spot, or in this case, maybe the wrong spot at the wrong card, things can go very, very crazily for you. Lastly, we have the rumor phase. The first player in this game is known as the voice of Zona. That player draws a rumor card and resolves it. 
Firstly, you locate in the top left hand corner of the card, you're going to see how far the emissions track advances. This represents the buildup of radioactive energy from inside the reactors of Chernobyl. When this track reaches the end, any being caught in an open area, i.e. not in a bunker or a secret location, will potentially take heinous amounts of radioactive damage. All threat tokens on the map are wiped out, all items in the marketplace are refreshed, and new threat tokens come swarming into Zona. Once the board has been repopulated, the rest of the rumor card is carried out based on the choices of the voice of Zona. This first player heavily dictates how devastating these cards are. These events can be brutal to everyone or to a specific player and they get to choose. When you have to make a test in this game, you look at your base stat value, then you roll three dice and you either add or subtract from that value. Now abilities, items, and your fatigue dial can help players modify their total roll to increase their chances of success. Taking items that help complement your character's weak areas is a really important thing to ensuring success in Zona. Items play a large part of Zona. There is a huge aspect of equipment management and optimizing your character for the challenges you know are sure to come. If you are able to make it into the red zone, pass the test to get into the sarcophagus and can beat the final event and still remain alive, you have just found the source and you win Zona. Now let's move on to components. The components of Zona are nothing over the top as far as production goes. The first thing I want to talk about is that Zona does not shy away from using space. Nothing in this game feels cluttered and there's a lot of things going on. There are tons of item cards, there's lots of event cards, threat tokens, but each have their own unique space on the board. And interestingly, they actually have two sides to the board. One side for the one and two person game, and the other side for the three and four person game. The main difference being that the one and two person game is a little more um, constricting for how you move across the map. It kind of helps prolong the game, whereas the three to four person game is a, is a bit more open. The character boards are nice and clear. The backpacks are nice. And with all of this, you know, luxury use of space comes a pretty damn big game. In addition to the large board, you potentially have four character boards and their backpacks and their items to fit onto a table. And this actually took my biggest table to accommodate nicely. Now, the art of Zona is a bit of an odd one. It really reminds me of like a 90s arcade shooter, um, like Maximum Force. And if this is kind of what it's going for, which I think it is, then I think they nail it. I will say though that the color choice in this game is really good, um, as it really helps identify kind of the mounting danger as you move around the map. I want to talk about a few components in particular that I really like. Uh, the first one is that the threat tokens in the form of the anomalies and the mutants are quite clever. Um, they were obviously very well thought of, and the bonuses that they gain really, um, you know, punish certain styles of play, but you know what the monsters are capable of if you play the game multiple times, so you can kind of plan against them. But I actually really like that, you know, there are monsters that hurt you if you have more artifacts, or if you're in a secret location, you know, in the dark, they're more powerful, but in the light, they're actually not that big of a deal. I also really like the backpack. It, um, definitely provides a clear space to prioritize your items, but five spaces is not enough, and obviously the game designers knew this, because it creates a very cool, like, what do I really need? Like, how valuable is this item to me? Component to the game. The other components, like the item cards, there are a ton of them, and they really match what you think they would do, you know, like guns are good against monsters, there's lots of drugs and alcohol in this game, which can temporarily increase your stats. Now the game does come with models uh, for your characters and um, you know whatever. This game is not about models. I really think the models in this game were held, uh, used to just deter you know differentiate yourself from the cardboard threat tokens. I'm sure everything in here could just be tokens and it'd be fine but you know that little difference helps. Now along with the components I wanted to talk about the theme of the game. And the theme of Zona is great. This setting is totally perfect for this type of game. 
And we've seen this before with the likes of the Metro series for video games or the Stalker or Fallout series. Post-apocalypse radioactive is a really good setting for a survival type game. The types of weapons and items that are available in this game make a lot of sense and their abilities match that. The events in this game represent moments in time that really fit the survival and post-apocalypse genre well. They're kind of like, you know, those moments in Fallout where you're wandering in the middle of nowhere and something really random and cool happens. That's what the events represent here and I think they do a good job. I will say that the story of Zona is really only elaborated on in the rulebook before you play the game. The characters have no backstory, and as a result, some of the names used on flavor text of cards, they just mean very little. This is not a character progression game. This is not a story progression game. It's a character advancement game. It's about making your character stronger. And again, the story is not very present. It's more, you know, the zest or the environment, the atmosphere, I guess you would say, that's present. Now, moving on to Fun Factor. So, Zona does a lot of things right. I would definitely compare this game to something like Talisman. You start with a weak character and work your way through progressively harder zones, acquiring items and gears that will help you, hopefully, in the final challenge that will help you win the game. Now, Zone is not actually that heavy of a game when it comes to decision making. You know you have to make your way to two secret locations to obtain secrets, then you have to make your way into the red zone to the sarcophagus. Along the way, you can choose what you know you buy and sell, and what items to keep that you may pick up. You also need to know how and when to use your items, but you know, basically you just want to use them any time they would help you pass a test. Those are the only real decisions that you have to make in this game, and as a result, it's a pretty light play. Events and threat tokens are sort of just things that are thrust upon you and you kind of just have to deal with. Their resolution is largely just pass or fail. There is rarely a situation in Zona where you're actually having to make a decision or there's like a branching decision. It's pretty black and white. I will say that the timing of the game, you know, the length, actually is calculated pretty well where every time I've played you have been mere turns away or on the last turn to succeed which I think they absolutely nailed. And talking about decision making it's really all about making decisions in the present moment. There are a few things you can plan towards you know you know that the sarcophagus is going to be challenging maybe you know that one of your stats is really low so probably having things to help bring it up is a good idea. Those are things you can plan towards. Now one thing that Zona does very interestingly is player interaction. There's a big theme these days of games where you're playing alongside your fellow players. You aren't really interacting, but you know someone does win at the end. Now Zona is actually in a unique spot in that regard. Generally speaking, there isn't a ton of player interaction, but when it does happen, it is pretty aggressive. And first, let me explain by saying Zona is not an easy game on its own. You know, playing unimpeded and winning is actually challenging. So I understand why the developers didn't want people, you know, fighting or shooting each other or stealing each other's stuff. The interaction in this game kind of comes in two forms, and that is at secret locations and in the emission phase. And honestly, they're two of my favorite aspects of the game. The secret locations are interesting because they have to be opened first, and whoever actually spends the resources to open them, opens them for everyone. So there's this funny moment where everybody might be like, you know, tiptoeing around outside, you know, waiting for somebody to open it, and then the emission track's building, and you're like, it's gonna blow, so then somebody opens it and throws themselves inside, and then there's not enough room in there, so somebody gets roasted, and... It's pretty funny that way. The next, and this is probably the best part of the game, is the voice of Zona, which comes out during the emission phase. As the first player or the voice of Zona, you get to carry out the rumor card. These effects can be immediate and devastating, or long-lasting and devastating. For example, there's a card called Answering the Call. Now you draw four threat tokens, and you get to choose the one that is the worst for somebody, or I mean you might be a nice person, but probably not. You choose the one which is the worst for somebody, put it on them, and they immediately have to fight it, which is brutal. Next we have something called Time Slip, and this is a very deceptively strong card. 
not only does it advance the emission track by two, but you then get to look at the next two rumor cards and arrange them in any order. Now what's strong about this is that you can deliberately place cards that will trigger an emission faster and you can run for cover, or you can put cards that have zero emission track value. So people throw themselves in a bunker thinking that you're going to hose them and you just tra-la-la around the wasteland knowing that there's not going to be emission triggered for two turns and they waste all their time. Those are the moments of Zona which are just so sneaky. This game is largely a play alongside your friend's game, but man, that voice of Zona can sewer people. Now when it comes to replayability, the game is actually pretty replayable. Not only does it play well solo, but the sheer number of events in this game is staggering. It will take countless playthroughs to see all of them, not to mention that every event card has two locations where specific crazy events happen, and then an all other location. So, you know, there's even replayability in that itself. The market constantly refreshing means you're going to see different items at every playthrough. And one of the things I love and makes it the most attractive to play again is the game has a habit of making epic moments. There have been countless epic experiences while playing this game. For example, I'm out in the open and like the emission is going to happen and I'm just accepting my death. But an event results in me being knocked unconscious, dragged to a scientific bunker where people are experimenting on me. And even though that was obviously horrific and terrible, the emission went off and I was saved. So these funny moments like that happen a lot, and they're truly where the game shines. Now obviously this is a game with dice, and I want to touch on the luck. And in this game, luck does matter. You'll be rolling dice a decent amount, and if things don't go well for you, it will make some very, very shitty situations worse. However, luck can be mitigated easily. Firstly, Everyone can re-roll their dice at the cost of endurance, so that's good. And secondly, the higher your stat value is going into a test, you're much more likely to succeed. And that's because only 33% of the dice faces on the dice are actually negative, so generally speaking, you're either going to come out neutral or ahead. The other aspect of luck in this game is what attribute is being tested by a certain encounter. Now, you might be the smartest scavenger Zona has ever seen, but if the final confrontation at the sarcophagus has a horde of mutants running at you, you're dead. It's like you're studying for a math test, and then you show up and find out that you're actually competing in track and field. Again, you technically could have prepared for this. The worst offender of luck comes up once in a while, but it's no less terrible. And this is that if you and another character are at the sarcophagus and attempting to win the game at the same time, whoever comes first in the turn order does the test first, and if they pass, they win. We've made a house rule where if two people are there and two people are making the test and they both pass, you both win. Now, Zona is not totally an original idea. You may remember that I actually compare it to Talisman, and the similarities are uncanny. Choose a person, make your way across a zone, and hopefully you're strong enough to survive the final encounter. When it comes to the core mechanics, a lot of this has been done and seen before. There are some key differences, though, that make Zona unique, like the voice of Zona, which is amazing. Uh, the frequent resetting of the board state is very clever. It keeps things fresh. The myriad of events, which help spice things up. And lastly, the game timer in the form of the rumors cards helps end the game, win or lose, and keep it shorter than it could be. So lastly, and most importantly, is the game fun? And for me, I would say absolutely yes. I don't mind a longer format game that isn't a dungeon delve or like a strategy empire type game. This is an adventure game which starts and wraps up in one sitting. And there is a place for that on your shelf. When I looked at my shelf and I placed Zona on it, I realized I don't actually own a game like this. It's not legacy, it's not a puzzle type dungeon delve like Warhammer Quest or a card game. It definitely has its own place. I don't, however, think that it's a type of game that you need to have on your shelf, or certainly one of the first games you should get if you're trying to flesh out your collection. If you love the theme of the game, absolutely get it. Or if you wanted a sort of one-sitting survival apocalyptic game, also I would definitely recommend this game. But it's more of like a treat game where maybe one person in your friend group should have it and you can play it every so often to mix it up. The best way to describe it is 
If someone wanted to play this game in my friend group, I would not hesitate at all. In fact, I would be stoked to play it. But I don't think it's a game that would come to mind for what to play on a game night if it wasn't sitting on my shelf. This has been my review for Zona, The Secrets of Chernobyl. I hope you've enjoyed. Have you played this game? Let me know what you think of it or let me know what you think of my review. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider supporting the channel by liking this video or subscribing to the channel and especially hitting that bell icon. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section below. I love talking with you guys. Until next video, I'll see you then. Thanks.